Hey everyone, welcome back to another medical terminology lesson. This lesson is on an introduction to the dermatologic system. So more specifically, we're going to look at different prefixes and suffixes to help describe certain skin lesions and certain skin conditions. But this is only a brief, broad overview. If you want more information on specific terms used for certain skin conditions and skin lesions, please check out my lesson on introduction to dermatology. So before we get into the dermatologic system, let's just talk about the word dermatologic. So if we break down that word, dermat or dermato means skin. Ology, that part of the word, comes from ology, meaning study of. And the suffix ik means pertaining to. So when we actually put this all together, dermatologic means pertaining to the study of skin. And before we move into the different prefixes and suffixes, I want to talk about the word integumentary. So you might have heard of the integumentary system. And it's actually a bodily system involving skin and related appendages. So we're going to get into the different prefixes and suffixes describing different parts of the skin. So the first prefix we're going to talk about is the prefix cutane, which means referring to the skin. And then I didn't mention this before, but the prefix integument or integumento refers to skin as well. So that's where that part of the integumentary system comes from. Integument means skin. So those both refer to the skin. So we're going to look at different medical terms that describe the different layers of skin from most superficial down into deeper areas of the skin. So the first one is the prefix epiderm, which refers to epidermis. So the epidermis is the first top layer of the skin. And you can think of words like epidermal, like an epidermal cyst. The second is derm or dermato. We looked at this word before. It refers to the skin, but it also refers to the dermis. And the dermis would be the second layer of the skin, broadly speaking. So it's the layer deeper to the dermis. And then there's also a related suffix, derma, which refers to the dermis as well. But it usually refers to a condition of the dermis. So different types of conditions like pyoderma, those types of words. And then we can also see hypoderm. So hypoderm refers to the hypodermis, so below the dermis. So if we actually broke down this prefix even more, hypo means below or less than, and derm refers to the dermis or the skin. So hypodermis refers to the area below the dermis. Other parts of the dermatologic system include the nail. So the suffix nikia refers to the area surrounding the nail. But we can also see the prefix Oniko or onikio, referring to the nail as well. So you can think of words like onychomycosis, a fungal infection of the nail. And other words that describe the skin include the prefix carrot, which refers to keratin. So skin is made of keratin, but it can also refer to hard or thickening. So carrot, the word, you can think of a word like hyperkeratosis. So hyperkeratosis is a thickening of the skin, usually due to friction. Another prefix that is often used with regards to the skin is adeno. So you've probably seen this if you've looked at my other lessons. Adeno means gland. So you can think of words like adenitis, so an inflammation of the gland. Other words that can also be used in the dermatologic system include adipo or adipo. So this refers to fat. You can think of words like adipocyte, a fat cell. And we can also think of words like lipo. So lipo also refers to fat. And you can think of words like liposuction. Other terms to describe the skin include fibro, and the prefix fibro literally means fibrous, so fibrous tissue. Another one would be col or colla, referring to collagen. And the prefix pio refers to pus, so we talked about pyoderma as a possible word, so pus in the skin. We can also see prefixes like sebo, which means or refers to sebum. Another prefix that can be used to describe a skin lesion more specifically is the prefix bull, which refers to bulla. Bulla are fluid-filled raised skin lesions, and you can think of a medical condition known as bullous pemphigoid. So bullous pemphigoid is a skin condition that has bulla. So again, fluid-filled raised lesions. And then another prefix you might see is vesicule, which refers to vesicles. So you can think of things like herpes as a possible uh, associated medical condition with this term. And some other medical terms that can refer to conditions include edema or edeme, which refers to fluid-filled or swelling. So you can think of edematous, so a part of the body or part of the skin that is swelling, fluid-filled. 
Another prefix is cellule, and cellule really means cell, but it really refers to a skin condition. And you can think of medical conditions like cellulitis. So itis meaning inflammation, so inflammation of really cells, but really it's a skin condition. And then another word you might see with regards to other dermatologic conditions includes tinea. And tinea really refers to a fungal infection. So I just wanted to add that here for completeness. And it's also important for describing skin lesions and other skin conditions, we need to use colors. So you've probably seen these in other lessons, but I just want to quickly go over them. Erythro or erith means red. Melano means black, so you can think of melanocyte. Xanth means yellow, so xanthoma, a yellow deposit of cholesterol, usually around the eyes. Jond means yellow, and you can think of words like jaundice. And the prefix cyano means blue, so you can think of words like cyanotic or cyanosis, so when the skin appears blue. So I just wanted to quickly go over those as well. If you want more information on different colors, please check out my lessons on those topics. So again, we learned about some of the prefixes and suffixes we can use to describe certain skin conditions. So we talked about words like pio, referring to pus. We talked about bull, referring to bulla. And we talked about vesicle, referring to vesicles. And we can also see here edema or edema, referring to fluid-filled or swelling. Cellule, referring to cell, but more specifically the condition cellulitis. And tinea refers to fungal infections. And then some of these colors can be used to describe certain types of cells, but also certain types of conditions. So now that we've learned those dermatologic terms, let's put them to practice. So the first word we're going to look at is paranychia. So if we break down the word, prefix para means nearby. So this would have been learned in a basics lesson. And the suffix nikia we learned in this lesson refers to an area surrounding the nail. So paranychia means nearby the area surrounding the nail. That's what paranychia means. So when you actually look at a finger in the paranychia is actually the area on the sides of the nail. The next word we're going to look at is subcutaneous. So again, we break down the word. The prefix sub, sub means below. And the suffix cutane or cutaneous means referring to the skin. So when we put this together, subcutaneous means referring to below the skin. So the subcutaneous layer is often below the dermis or hypodermis. And the next word we're going to look at is erythroderma. So we break down the word erythroderma. So erythro refers to the color red. And the suffix derma refers to the skin. So erythroderma means a reddened skin. So it's actually a condition where we can see a reddened skin, erythroderma. So again, paranychia, we're breaking it down, para meaning nearby, nychia, area surrounding the nail. So it's nearby the area surrounding the nail. That's literally what that means. Subcutaneous, sub meaning below, cutaneous meaning referring to the skin. So subcutaneous is referring to below the skin. And then erythroderma, erythro meaning red. So you can think of words like erythrocyte, so red blood cell, and the suffix derma meaning skin. So erythroderma means reddened skin. So that was a quick lesson on medical terminology with regards to the dermatologic system. If you want more information on dermatology, please check my lesson on Introduction to Dermatology. And if you haven't already, please consider liking, subscribing, and clicking the notification bell to help support the channel and stay up to date on future lessons. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you next time.